Okay, hi guys. So this is a video I'm going to create just to show you how to, to do the 3D modeling and then export that 3D model to a STL that can be sent to a printer. And we're going to use that uh, the impact assessment um, tutorial that I set up. And if we just have a look at the version of QGIS that I'm using quickly, it's uh, Madeira 3.4.7. Okay, so that's what I'm using for this particular model. All right, so we have we should have our 3D model modeling plugin turned on. We just go have a look and see which one that is. It's the one called QGIS 2.3 JS. So that one needs to be turned on. And once that's turned on, we'll have a, another menu in our web menu. Okay, and it's called QGIS 2.3 Exporter. So we're going to select that and then just choose the settings for our model. Okay, so the elevation surface is going to be the DEM. All right, there we go. So now we just need to adjust some settings for that DEM. If we right click on the DEM and say properties, we want to just boot the uh, resampling level up slightly. And then we want to exclude areas that are outside of our study area. So we want to clip the, the surface model to a polygon layer. And that will be this study area in this example. The resolution we can push up a bit, and that is it for those settings. So we can say OK, and that should then rebuild that model. OK, and that might take a little while to render. So if, if nothing happens immediately, don't panic there. Just, just give your computer time to actually build that model, because it is quite a, a memory-hungry exercise. OK, so here's our little model. And what we wanted to do is just put the structures on that surface. So I'm going to select the point structures and then just set those properties. And I want it to display as a cylinder and it must be relative to the DEM. And then the, the distance between the actual cylinder and the DEM is going to be zero. So it's not elevated above the DEM. It's actually starting on the DEM. The radius of the cylinder, uh, we can make that. Now let's make it 20. And the height can be the same as the height field in the attribute table for those structures, that structure point file. And OK, there we go. OK, so I've clicked OK. And that nice purple color um, helps us see them. And you can see they are pushed off the surface by the distance or the, the elevation that is in that, uh, in that point file. OK, so there is our 3D model. So now we want to take this digital 3D model and view it in a Explorer or a Web Explorer. So we just need to go to File and Export to Web. OK, and then just choose the Output folder. And mine is on my desktop and it is called Visual Impact Spatial 3D. That is my folder, 3D, and Export. And what that will now do is just create a whole bunch of files in that, uh, in that folder. And one of them will be an HTML file, an indexed HTML file, which you will then be able to open in a web browser. OK, and what I've noticed is that Chrome does not like this plugin. Uh, well, not the plugin. It, it, doesn't allow, it, it doesn't allow to render because it doesn't have, what does it say here? It says, this browser doesn't allow loading local files via Ajax. OK, so, so Chrome and I think there might be a couple other browsers that don't work for this little model. But luckily, Firefox does. So if you want to view this model, you're going to need to open it in Firefox. So I'm just going to go to my Explorer and go and find that model where I saved it to. And it was over here. It was there in that folder. OK, so this is maybe a good example or a good opportunity for me to show you how that works. The plugin has exported. This was a completely blank folder. The plugin has exported all of these folders um, into this folder with an HTML file, which will then reference the data and the other files that are in this folder. So if we now open this in uh, Firefox, so we're going to open with Firefox, we should now see our model. OK, and there it is. So now it's being viewed in a web browser. So those files can all be uploaded to a website and they can be viewed online. And the nice thing about that is you don't need QGIS or any special 3D rendering software to view this model. 
you just need an ordinary browser that will view those AJAX, AJAX files. And in this example, Firefox is doing the job for us. Okay, so then that's how to view and export your digital version of that model. But now we want to be able to uh, print that model. So we need another plugin to export this model to an STL. So we can close this down and go and search for that plugin. Now that plugin is called DEM2 3D. So you can see mine's already selected and installed, but you might need to come in here and type in DEM and then find that model. Just select it and install it. And once that's done, you should have the option to export to STL. And that option is available to us via the, the raster menu. Because, so if you select the raster menu, you'll see here it is here, DEM2 3D. Okay. Now before I do that, I just want to make sure that the 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 layer that the layer extent that I'm going to clip to for this next step is turned on. And it is my study area layer, and it is not turned on. And so I just need to make sure that's turned on because if it, it if it isn't on, the plugin won't see it. Okay, so now we can export. So we go DEM, STL, DEM, 3D printing. We select that option. And here we go. So now we just need to select the three-dimensional surface to export. And there are only two rasters in here, but and one of them is the elevation surface, the DEM. And I'm not too sure what's going on here. You see these, these little cells are a bit squished. Um, that could uh, be something to do with the, this latest plugin uh, release, or I don't know, maybe a, like a little graphic issue on my side. So I don't know if yours is doing the same thing. But anyway, that's DEM there, and I see this is also squished. I can see that's one point something, but we'll get to that just now. Okay, so we want to print the set the extent to print, and we're going to choose a, one of our our layers, our existing layers. So we click on this option. And then this is where the study area would not have been visible if it were not turned on. So that's why I turned it on. So we can select study area and OK. And then I'm going to set our minimum spacing to 0 0.5. OK, and then the scale. So now what this will, by setting our scale here, if we set this to 20,000, let's say, is that 2,000, 20,000? OK, 20,000. Then as we change the scale, it'll change the, the final output in millimeters of the model. So this is uh, what is our, our printing bay that I've worked on before is A3, which is around 300 mils by 420. So this would quite happily fit inside the printing bay of that printer. But most software packages um, that prepare prints or three-dimensional models for printing allow you to rescale anyway. So this, I don't think this is as critical um, if you are able to rescale in your printing software. But anyway, let's just set that at 20,000 for this example. Now the other option here is to change the, the scaling factor uh, or the exaggeration, the vertical exaggeration. If you've got a relatively flat area and it's not really uh, giving you a satisfactory um, idea of what the topography is, you can just change the scale here just to slightly exaggerate your scale. So, for instance, if we change that to, let's just use 1.5, just to show you how that exaggeration works. So we set that to 1.5, so now it's going to be one and a half times uh, steeper or taller than everything. And that's what we'll do. Okay, and then the base height, we're going to set to zero. And that is it. We can now select export to STL. Okay, then we just need to go and put this somewhere. And I'll save it in this folder and DEM model .stl, that is fine. And click save. And there it goes. And I think this is quite a, a relatively fast process, but yeah, I'll give it time if, if your machine is slightly slower. Just be patient. Nearly there. Okay, so now that has been exported. So we should be able to go into that folder and open up the, that STL. So we can close this down. And now this is where you would use or open open this the, the, the exported model in your uh, software that's linked to your printer. And I think I've got something online that, that should be able to open this um, 
what is mine called? I think it's called uh, Mesh Magic. Yes, I think my program is called Mesh Magic. If I just double click on that, that should open. Uh, let's just keep those changes. Okay, and there you go. There is your model. And this one is slightly steeper uh, because of that 1 in 5 exaggeration that I've applied to this model. Now you should be able to send that to a printer. And depending on your printers, um, we are not able with most, uh, well, in this particular instance, to, to print the colors uh, of, the, of that model. This will just be one solid color. color. But still, it's a uh, it's a, it's a nice application to have in QGIS because it allows you to export your three-dimensional model to a 3D printer. And that's that's pretty much how you do it. So give me a shout if you have any questions. But um, yeah, that's those two plugins which are fairly useful 3D plugins with QGIS. Cheers.